get a little crazy. How would I characterize my own music? You know, I always think it's soulful. I think there's always kind of, there's something quite unique and, 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 and comforting about delivering it in a slightly melancholic way. You know, so I'll sing a lot of like major over minor, you know, to kind of add a little bit of tension. Crazy has this kind of sort of d d drive in, uh, uh, a slightly darker uh, rhythm track to it, but then it has this kind of sweet, you know, melody in the chorus, we're never going to survive unless we get a little crazy. I can see clearly now the rain is gone. My teacher, who, was, who played a very influential part in my, uh, in my life, a guy called Mr. Wren, he was a singer himself, and he encouraged me so much that I sang at the PTA evening. Um, when I was 11. That Johnny Nash song, I can see clearly now. I remember them calling my name up in, in the assembly and me get, go into a stage and just being completely terrified. I closed my eyes and I sang that and that was the first time my parents had ever heard me sing. You know, everything went completely silent. But then afterwards everyone clapped and, and it just kind of felt like the most comfortable place to be. Let's, let's save all the children. I love to listen to Marvin Gaye. How can you love music and not love Marvin? One of my favorites is Save the Children. That's the one that really kind of gets me. I just think that you can really feel his soul in that song. And, and really that's kind of what music is all about. You know, that's certainly what we try and aspire to as musicians is to try and, you know, communicate this, this emotion. I think that's when music's at its best, when, you, when, um, when there's no edit points you know, from the, uh, from the artist to the listener. There's an opera singer by the name of Franco Corelli, who is not as well known as the, you know, the greats, the three tenors, you know, Pavarotti and, and company. Um, his version of Nessun Dorma is arguably one of the finest vocal performances that I've ever heard. And the reason I, I, I feel so is because, you know, you hear him hit the high C, in uh, Nessun Dorma, and it's so effortless, and I think that's kind of what we all dream about as, as singers, being able to kind of sing effortlessly in much in the same way that Corelli did. If only I could, uh, <laughs> if I could be that good. It sounds like Times Like These by the Foo Fighters. For some reason, I've just been playing that over and over again on my music player. Yeah, I just like the sentiment of that song. You know, I love, I love the lyrics and the chorus. They're beautiful. Times like these, we give and give again. Times like these, we learn to love again, time and time again. I think it's just such a beautiful sentiment. Amy Winehouse has a really fantastic voice. Back to Black, which I think is the best song on, on the album. You know, there are lots of uh, really good up-and-coming um, uh, artists. I think we're, in, we're living in a time where music is really rich at the moment, despite, you know, the uh, kind of ebb and flow of the music industry on the, on the commercial side. I think that it's a really exciting time for music. Somebody was telling me the other day that the Dalai Lama was saying that musicians had a really important role to play in society, particularly in, in present times, because they had the ability to kind of communicate with people in a completely unadulterated way. It was directly to the emotions with music. And I think, I mean, I do actually agree with that part of it. I don't know whether they, we're the most important pe people uh, uh, in society at the moment, but I, I definitely agree that um, you know, that's, that certainly is the power of music and, and the phenomenon to some respects is that you do have this direct conduit straight to the emotions. You can transcend language, you can cut through any kind of barriers. And now that your rose is in bloom, a light hits the gloom on the 